This was the worst idea I've ever had! I'm not joking everyone. This video series was absolute hell to make, and I sat right here in this very spot only a few days ago and said to myself, Oh, all of the Mega Man games are just about half an hour long, I could do all of the games in one big video before Mega Man 11 comes out! But no, I couldn't be any more wrong. After a total of 35 hours of gameplay later, no sleep due to anger and stress, nearly 150 recorded clips and almost shattering two controllers, I'm now a broken man. But hey, at least I got some videos out of it, right? <laughs> But why, pray tell, did it take me that long to finish a collection of mostly dinky NES games? Well, make yourself comfortable, sit back, get yourself a nice hot drink in your mega mug. M m mug a man m mug man And share in my anguish as we all dive into the world of every single classic Mega Man game. Yes, every single one, one to ten, kill me! So, Mega Man, he was invented for the NES in 1987 by Capcom, known in Japan as Rockman. His design is iconic, he's never far away from that trusty arm cannon also known as the Mega Buster. His music is always incredible no matter the game, his gameplay is consistent and classic 2D run jumping and gunning action. And all this led to not only nine classic sequels so far, but also spin-offs, new franchises and sequels to those spin-offs and franchises. Oh yeah, and they're also known for being so brutally difficult to the point of making you want to rip your naughty bits off. <laughs> what you see is what you get with Mega Man, so there isn't that much point going into a lot of depth this early on. They all look basically the same, but with their own little mechanical differences, but many things do remain consistent for the gameplay. Most of the stages you can pick from will last you up to four minutes at most if you know what you're doing and don't die. You get new weapons with their own ammo count after each boss you defeat known as Robot Masters, and those very same Robot Masters are based around a rock, paper, scissors design where you need to experiment with other boss weapons to figure out what weaknesses that boss has against what weapon. And at least back in the 80s and early 90s, most of the longevity with the games came from the constant replaying of each stage to get better at them, using the boss weapons to clear trickier parts, and trial and erroring your way to the finish line by guessing what attack to use on what boss at the end. Not only that, all of the games allow you to pick any stage in any order you want to do, so even though short by design, replayability is a big selling point here. That, and with the final parts of each game, you'll find yourself doing them over and over again because of how bullshitty they can get. Either way, Mega Man 11 was was announced pretty recently and at the time of this video's publishing it's scheduled to be released on October 2nd 2018, eight years after Mega Man 10. And I personally wanted to do a Catechorus all about Mega Man 11 since I did Mega Man 8 on my channel, the only PS1 entry of the classic Mega Man series. But in order to celebrate 11, I figured I needed to have a little bit more experience with the series and so decided to pick up both of the legacy collections on Steam and go through every classic game all in one go back to back so that I knew what I was talking about. Now, personally, I've only played Mega Man Powered Up, the Mega Man 1 remake, Mega Man 2, a little bit of 3 and 8, so I am far from an experienced player, but now I'm pretty experienced, I can tell you that much. I'm sorry it took so long for this video to get done, and I'm sorry it wasn't in one big video, but as I'm sure you can imagine, this was very painful. I did not expect it to be this difficult, so here we are with part one at least. Without further ado, let's go. Okay, so what's the story here? Dr. Light is a jolly old Santa who, thanks to his genius, develops many different types of robot masters for help in industrial jobs. However, six of these start going wrong out of nowhere and start attacking the city of buildings, leading him to suspect that his old jealous rival Dr. Wily is behind the malfunctions in order to get back at him for his success. Turns out he's right and Dr. Wily actually wants to take over the world with these robot masters as you do, and so Rock, Dr. Light's robot assistant, embedded with a strong sense of right and wrong, offers his body to be converted into Mega Man in order to stop the nefarious Wily once and for all. Nice and simple but effective, it's the 80s after all, so onto the game itself. Well, to pardon the pun, my relationship with Mega Man 1 started off Rocky. I had to learn how Mega Man worked all those years ago, and it wasn't as smooth of a start as I was hoping. I mean, you know you're playing an old game when you have a silent title screen and then jump straight into a stage select with no warning at all, even though for 1987 being able to pick your own stage to do at your own time was kind of groundbreaking. I decided to start with Cutman because I thought he could help me with my throat in case these games ruin my soul, and then the first screen pops up and immediately gives me shit with this smirking mm -hmm. piss face constantly attacking me. I then experienced reloading after death right into enemy pathways, areas where I swear it's impossible to not get here and slow down. To top it off, I got to the fight with Edward Scissorhead and he appeared to know exactly where I was going to be every millisecond of the battle until I died in complete misery once I realised I had another nine games to go after this. So I decided to restart the game, which is when I discovered these really cool art backgrounds unique to every game on the Legacy Collection. Now we look better, I'm expecting the game to give me nonsense, and I'm ready. It was then I discovered that the key to Mega Man 1 for the most part is just 
going for it. Ignore your instincts and just don't think about what you're doing and you'll find yourself breezing through many of the stages. Mega Man 1 more than anything punishes hesitation and panicking. So get confident, go for it, and you should be golden most of the time. It also doesn't help how enemies can shoot through objects, which really sucks, but luckily enough, so can you. So use that to your advantage whenever you can, since Mega Man for some ungodly reason can't point his Mega Buster arm cannon in any direction other than straight ahead or behind him. This does make some parts unnecessarily tricky for sure, but that's what the boss weapons are used for, so you can't complain that much. Think of the Mega Buster like the whip in classic Castlevania. It does the job just fine, but don't rely on it all the time and try to use sub weapons as much as you can. So anyway, I beat the first boss cut man and I get a fantastic victory tune that really makes you feel like you overcame a true hurdle in your quest. <laughs> Yay, one down and another. How many more to go? The soundtrack itself overall I found all right. Not like Castlevania levels of kick-ass, but for the late 80s it's great enough for the run and gun action and extremely catchy and memorable. The visuals aren't as meticulous and detailed as Castlevania either, and it may be a little too simplistic and empty for most, but it works with the faster paced nature of Mega Man. Either way, the game is at least nice and colourful enough, and the anime styled aesthetic mixed with the choppy blocky 8-bit pixels I actually really liked. It goes together really well, and Capcom seemed to like it too, since this style of Mega Man, the sprite especially, would be reused in every future game no matter how more detailed the backgrounds and bosses would get. I mean, look at Mega Man, he's pretty adorable as far as mascot characters go. Simplistic visuals don't mean simplistic gameplay though, because as far as the running gun action is concerned, this is a standard 8-bit tough-as-nails platform with all the old-school archaic horse waste to keep you on your toes. Or to just kill you for no reason at all, thanks so much for that game. There are so many jumps that give you no room for error, with ceilings blocking your head unless you hit jump at the pixel-perfect moment just before you fall off the edge. The knockback can be really unforgiving, some enemies throw so much bull at you that I'm convinced there's nothing you can do, the timing of the disappearing block segments are ridiculously precise and also include trick blocks to throw you off, and your fall speed is so damn fast. Look at this. Mega Man plummets downwards faster than an elephant in a trapeze. It's almost like he just heard that hell was hiding at the bottom of the screen and thinks, yep, sign me up! <laughs> I also just noticed a conspicuous lump on this drawing of Mega Man in the background of the game. This is a little distracting, I won't lie, but at least he doesn't look like... <sighs> All of this overly difficult nonsense though is to be expected, seeing as that this is a very short game, the shortest of the series easily. And the replayability aspect comes from what I said earlier, getting more weapons, tackling stages with those weapons to make things easier, and figuring out each Robot Master's weakness until you win the game. And to give Mega Man 1 credit, you can feasibly guess what each weapon will be effective for each robot on the character select screen without even jumping into a stage for the sake of even more trial and error on top of what's already here. The weaknesses are really creative as well and not blindingly obvious, Cut Man's weapon can cut electric wires for instance. Bombs are usually used for blowing up rocks while mining. You can use fire to light the fuse of a bomb, etc. And even cooler, if you just so happen to have an ability on you, you can replay certain stages with those same powers to unlock additional routes for more optional goodies. Not just health and weapon ammo, but also the beam, the most useful item in the game by far. Yeah, get stuffed, flying platform pal! Get stuffed right in your stuffy little stuffed up- <laughs> Oh. One thing I really didn't appreciate though is at the final stage when going through Wily's fortress because, well, you need the beam here to get through, so no matter what predicament you find yourself in, you have to go back to Elecman stage and find the damn thing. Which, unfortunately, I had to do. I mean, at least with finding the Robot Master's weaknesses, you can actually kill them all with the Mega Buster, just in case you got that far and don't want to replay the stage again with the correct power-up. But here, the power-up isn't a cool bonus like it should be for moments like this. It's a necessity and a bit of a prick move when it appears to be an optional item off the beaten path. But I suppose you'll probably game over at this point anyway, meaning you'll have no excuse but to go back, so thanks game either way. Make sure you also don't change weapons during climbing a ladder because you'll fall, that's really nice, and don't let a single pixel of your body touch any spikes. Not a pixel. And not that pixels either, it's shit! And there's a lot of spikes in this game, so get used to it. Oh, and by the way, if you die, you lose a life, sure, and get your health back to full, sure, but you don't get your weapon energy back. So in many cases, especially against certain robot masters, if you waste all the weapon ammo, you might as well restart anyway. Oh, and sometimes the game does stuff like this. <laughs> What in the holy mother of bitch trees happened there? I'm also not the biggest fan of Mega Man's traction in this game. For some reason, he slips all over the place when he comes to a stop, making some singular block platforming unnecessarily painful. And speaking of painful, how about this bit that sees you going over bottomless pits with platforms that randomly shoot at you with no pattern while flying penguins are being thrown at you? I was really lucky enough to get through this part on my second try, but Christ on a bike, they sold this torture device to kids in the 80s. If it weren't for how huge and overpowered Elect Man's weapon is, many of these 
these areas would be the end of me before even reaching the second game. But yeah, I do love this weapon. It just destroys everything and fires up and down and ahead. I also love those moments where the game rewards those who pay attention, like when you're dropping down here and you can steer yourself to grab a load of goodies if you're attentive enough to this part over here. And this part in Gutsman stage with all the dropping rail platforms, many people's most hated bit, but I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a drummer. <laughs> But the rhythm and timing for this part I really didn't find that tricky. I mean, I died a few times for sure, but I didn't find it that difficult. It's quite a clever setup, actually. Oh! And you can slide up ladders. Worst boss in the game, though? Fireman. Easily. You aren't even a robot! You're an occupation! I hate you, Fireman! Sam. His pattern makes absolutely no sense. Look at this. It's too fast, impossible to dodge or predict, and he does so much damage. Oh, and the final part of this game can keel over and never wake up for all I care, even though it is brilliant how Dr. Wily bobs his eyebrows. <laughs> Oh, and how about that yellow bloody devil? This guy hits like a truck, has an extremely intricate and tricky to read and react attack pattern as he morphs from one end of the screen to the other, and some people like Some Call Me Johnny recommend using the Elegman pause glitz trick to score multiple hits on him before he has another chance to do that stupid attack sequence again. But I didn't! Oh yes, yeah, see this? I kicked this stupid pillock right in the nuts without using the trick at all, and I honestly found the challenge of learning the pattern extremely rewarding. Kind of like that part in Gutsman stage, I didn't think this was too bad after a few tries. I mean, it's still difficult, but not too bad. And if you get past all of this, get ready for more wily goodness with this boss, which I began with assuming the weakness was Gutsman's weapon since there were blocks here that you could throw at the boss, which it turned out to be the weakness. That's great, but if you do that at the start of the fight, you've lost. Because because that means you can't jump over the thing while it moves around the arena unless you keep the blocks there. Oh, by the way, the blocks don't respawn if you die, so just game over and start again. And once you even know all of this, it isn't too bad once again, but getting this far to only have the game bitch slap you is not fair at all. Even then, it's impossible to predict which end of the screen these things appear from, and therefore which end of the screen you should be on in order to 12 lords are leaping over it. And then you have a gauntlet rematch with every single robot master so far, which every game after this will do, so you had better remember the weaknesses and still have ammo left over, otherwise you will start all over again. If a little bit of luck is on your side though, get ready for Wily himself, and funnily enough, despite being two phases, he's one of the easier bosses in the game, especially compared to what you've just been through. At this point, you blow him up, Wily begs for forgiveness, and Mega Man does the truly heroic thing and leaves him there. You're an idiot. So obviously Wily's gonna come back and give us a sequel, but before we get there, can I just mention something? Overall, Mega Man 1 is all right. For a late 80s NES platformer in the first of a series, it's good enough, but the only reason I say that is because of the save feature that's present on the Legacy Collection. Without that, with all of the trial and error BULLSHIT the game expects you to deal with, Capcom wanted you to do most of the game with three tries before a game over and needing to begin an entire stage all over again. If I had that misfortune, I wouldn't have gone any further with the game after Wily Stage 1, it gets that difficult. There's just too much guesswork and luck-based progression for me to say this is where you start if you want to get into Mega Man. It's the first of the series and hot damn does it feel like it. But after all of this and... Mega Man just leaving Wily at the scene of his own crime. This leads us on to Mega Man 2, what many people consider to be the best game in the series. In this game, Dr. Wily has returned, which is what happens when you run away, and he decides instead of relying on working robots to take over the world, he's gonna create his own instead to combat Mega Man, and jumps up from 6 to 8. Much simpler plot this time around for sure, but that doesn't matter because Mega Man 2 is fantastic. For a second game, it does a ton brilliantly. It isn't my personal favourite, but the jumping quality is definitely the most noticeable. Mega Man 2 is the same basic game as 1, but improved, well, practically everywhere, especially in the presentation. For an 80s NES game, the opening cutscene is completely epic along with a little bit of story text. The soundtrack is probably the best in the whole series too, with its catchy, energetic and memorable melodies weaving in between hardcore beats and bass lines. And you can see how much more cool the game looks just from the improved animations and backgrounds and sprites for enemies and bosses alike. Just check out this transitional piece when you get new boss weapons. You even get to see Dr. Wily's fortress, and honestly, I get that they had a good base work to improve from Mega Man 1, but it feels like this is the proper start to the series. Well, I mean, they could have fixed the slippery feet, but what are you gonna do? Unlike 1, where playing with the save states is 
the only way I recommend you play the game. Two, on the other hand, is totally doable here just playing regularly because of how much fairer and tightly designed it is. And not just with the addition of collectible energy tanks that you can choose to use at the best points when at the end of a long stretch to get all of your health back. They've been a staple to the series ever since and for good reason, they're incredible. There's no instances of off-screen damage or kills, well, except with Bubble Man's stage. <laughs> you aren't swarmed with enemies at any point and the bosses are all much easier to read and predict with their added animations, but still challenging. And that's the key with Mega Man 2. It's easier than one, but still quite challenging. The balance is brilliant and every death here more or less feels like my fault. The game is designed not only better visually, but that same level of quality can be seen with different and unique platforming and enemy management challenges for each stage. There's lots of special one-off set pieces and different things to test you, like how fast you can read where you should drop down before dying, or how hard you should push the jump button to get over water obstacles without touching the one-hit kill spikes, all while dealing with still tricky but way more manageable groups of enemies. There's a bit more thought here than the constant onslaught of running and jumping than one, and a lot more tests of multitasking and managing multiple kinds of enemies while platforming, but the balance is the best bit of Mega Man 2, it's just right. You either have tricky, powerful enemies with little platforming hazards, or high platforming hazards with easier enemies to deal with, and there's more variety than one to boot. The weapons from bosses are also not only cooler to look at, but a hell of a lot more useful than one too, and all perform entirely differently depending on each situation in the stage, which is perfect for replays because this game is short once again, but the way all the levels are designed, especially Crash Man's with all the ladders and dead ends means that with the correct weapons you can pick up even more stuff to keep your run going. And after some Robot Master stages you even get a chance to unlock some of Dr. Light's environmental gadgets like Item 1, Item 2 and Item 3. I guess the guy in charge of naming things died the day before. And these give you all brand new ways to traverse levels, skip ridiculous parts of the game, and potentially give you more lives in E-Tanks to keep your run going. For an NES game without any save states, it's been very well thought out to be as accessible to new players as possible, as well as difficult to let you know that you're still playing a Mega Man game without you feeling like you should pour salt into your eyes and wring your own neck. And this is alongside all the cool features of the original game like Robot Master Weaknesses, which have all yet again created rock, paper, scissors mechanics. Metal blades can cut through wood, for instance, and even pop the bubbles. It makes sense to use something that stops time against something that's quick, and gusts of air could push something towards a crash. And everyone knows that bubbles can destroy heat. Okay, that's a stretch. Couldn't tell you how Air Man is weak against leaves though, but I really don't care because- <laughs> JESUS HE DIED QUICKLY! Oh no, no, not the real Jesus. I heard that was very slow. The Metal Blades though, my god, possible contender for best boss weapon in the series. They are totally incredible, they fire very quickly, have tons of ammo, and allow you to fire in multiple directions, which means the Mega Buster is basically obsolete once you get it. Although why Mega Man can now move his own firing arm in eight directions while throwing heavy metal saw blades and can't while spitting out poxy pricking lemons, I have no idea. But more importantly, you can still slide up ladders. <laughs> Health is more readily available, but it's balanced within the more difficult moments. Instead of health being something that only appears at midnight during a blood moon on the third leap year of the century, like in 1, 2 sees health almost like a trade-off for when you take damage during a more intense moment. Unless you fall down a pit or touch spikes, of course. For example, if you don't have the means to attack the rabbit here in Woodman stage, because Mega Man's arm is so muscly he can't move it towards his own feet from fiddling with himself too much, it's fine because you can get complimentary insurance. And considering all the bottomless pits and dozens of tiny birds that can either drain your health or push you into your doom, in Airman stage, they tend to drop a lot of ammo and health to apologise. To be fair though, this might be because I went with the normal difficulty instead of harder, or the fact that the metal blades are just so good that they make me want to dry hump the nearest inanimate object. <laughs> but overall, Mega Man 2 is just more fun, and even Wily is still having the time of his life. <laughs> Wily Fortress 1 begins and immediately kicks ass with the best song in the entire classic series if you ask me. It just sounds so good. <laughs> This is all followed up with classic Mega Man 2 gameplay. But then there's another boss much later on that can seriously do one. He has only one weakness, and even with a full energy bar of those bombs that you need to beat it, you can only still just about do it. If you die here after firing one bomb, you can't get any more ammo on this retry, meaning that you have lost the game. And equally, if you miss one shot, you have lost. Why this is here, I have no idea. It isn't challenging, isn't fair, and a serious flick in the gents for making it this far into such a tough but fair game, and stuff like this 
ruins the final run of Mega Man 2 towards Wily. It certainly has its highlights though, like the derpy bloody dragon that appears out of thin air to give you not only a chase sequence platforming challenge, but then a not too tricky bottomless pit boss. The only thing ruining it for me being the seizure, 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 seizure. Then there's another boss similar to the bubble machine thing from one, but the machines are smaller, easier to dodge, and it's just a better fight overall that doesn't rely on guesswork. And the next stage is more standard great Mega Man 2 gameplay with added tension, mixing water physics with funneling and instant death spikes. Which I did all in my first time, don't judge me. And then one of Dr. Wily's greatest inventions comes in ready to end your life. <laughs> Yeah, he's really as pathetic and easy as he looks. Which is more than I can say for the final Wily boss, at least the second form. The first form isn't too bad, but the second form, jeez. No matter what I tried, no matter what I did, jumping over the attacks or running underneath, I always got hit. If it weren't for the save states, I would have given up here too. Seriously, it feels like the same people from Mega Man 1 just appeared out of nowhere to design the final parts of this game with the stupid attack patterns and it ruins the consistently great journey as far as I'm concerned. But once you finally do it, Dr. Wily then transforms into an alien. And it doesn't stop there. It gets even weirder. He's weak to bubbles. Bubbles. Cheeky monkey bridge. And once that thing is beaten, it turns out that Dr. Wily was definitely not in Kansas anymore. And just when things couldn't get any weirder, Mega Man gets Wily to beg for forgiveness again, and then he what? leaves. With leaves. <laughs> Why Mega Man's done this again, I have no idea. And what is with this somber walk through the seasons? I mean, is he sad that he forgot to arrest the Doctor again? Well, I guess he must be a little bit stupid because as to be expected, Mega Man 3 then happened. All I can hope for is that Fish Man returns to make the third game just as good. <laughs> Well, I guess after the epicness of 2, Capcom decided not to bother trying to top it straight away, so we don't even start with an opening cutscene or an interesting title screen. A little disappointing, but at least the music is pretty calm yet grand to let you know what's about to take place once you hit that start button. Oh, shit! Despite no story explanation at all within the game, though, what's going on now is that Dr. Light and Dr. Wily are now working together, <laughs> yeah, right, in order to create a peacekeeping robot known as Gamma, until eight new robot masters suddenly go haywire and steal the crystals needed to power the thing. I wonder why that is. So we need to stop the masters and stop whoever is intercepting this whole shindig, including the new character known as Breakman, who keeps appearing throughout the game to stop Mega Man on his journey. And so now we've hit start. What do we do? Oh Jesus! Mega Man is one of the bosses. He's Doctor Wily. And speaking of Wily, I think he got a little bit too carried away when he recruited Hard Man. Hard Man. In fact, there isn't only Hard Man, but Snake Man too. What is this game trying to tell me? <laughs> This game is basically the same as Mega Man 2, but with a few alterations and additions. First of all, Mega Man doesn't slip around anymore like he's wearing special buttered shoes, which makes platforming a lot easier. But he's still able to slide up ladders. But it's not all sunshine and dandelion farts though, because even though the visual detail from enemies and environments is a lot busier and prettier than 1 and 2 combined, I think this is heavily affecting how the game actually performs. I mean, it could be the Steam port in the Legacy Collection, but I got main menu glitches, stuttering side-scrolling that was pretty last minute with showing me threats, and absolutely insane slowdown that made many parts of the game unplayable. Even some of the easier sections, just because of the inputs not registering during the slowdown. The boss weapons too are also not that interesting to me, and the logic for what we weaknesses work with which bosses are stretched so thin it's kind of funny. Hard Man's weakness is funnily enough not a special guillotine weapon but instead a magnet missile. I mean is it because he's made out of metal? But lots of things are hard, not just metal, it could be anything. And the search snake weapon can help you search for Gemini Man and his clones, I guess? But using a hard knuckle weapon on a spinning top? Or using a top weapon on a shadow man? Or a shadow weapon on sparks? I get that they need to make the robot masters more unique now the main elements have been taken up but it's a little jarring and what really doesn't help is the boss fights going down heavily in quality from 2 since they're more interested in spamming bullshit at you constantly instead of providing a fair fight with learnable attack animations and styles. Anyway, I chose Top Man as my first robot master because he just looks hilarious and I decided to test out the new ability which I got from him, which is... completely crap. After which I then hear a delightful little whistle. And then all of a sudden... A crazy red bastard man appears and jumps all over the place! 
Nice. And this is the pre-mentioned Breakman, a recurring mini boss throughout the game, and one that in every single fight does the exact same thing. He jumps around, doesn't run, and shoots. And that is it. Why the hell he's part of the game, I don't know, but he's easy enough at least to make you feel good for finishing him off. Another addition to Mega Man 3 is his slide ability, and this not only leads to a few more alternate parts and interesting level challenges, but I love how frigging terrified Mega Man looks whenever he does it. Oh my god! It looks a little bit like Hard Man found his way up Mega Man's bottom. You also have access to a new faithful dog companion known as Rush, not only adorable, but useful as heck too. There's Rush Coil for springing up towards higher platforms, Rush Jet for flying gracefully over any kind of terrain, and Rush Marine for underwater traversal. Which I never found, so I never used. Shut up. Like the slide ability, it opens up more interesting level parts and optional goodies that are hidden away, but acts a lot more like the items from Mega Man 2 in terms of usefulness in totally optional situations as a bonus to make them easier. Mega Man 3 may feel a little like 2 in many areas, but I found that 3 had a much higher focus on more animated and unpredictable attacks from enemies to go with the new visuals, and this does lead to pretty good non-rushing combat segments where you need to stop and think a lot more about what you're doing before continuing, which I do like, don't get me wrong, but I don't prefer it over the balance of combat and speedy platforming from the last game, and 3 goes a little bit too crazy on the targets that are way too small to hit. Christ, these things are annoying. And enemies like this are all over the damn place, which aren't fun to avoid or fight at all, just a health-draining and knockbacking nuisance. In fact, these enemies were the only time that the top spin attack was even vaguely useful. It's not even useful on the airborne enemy since it knocks you back whenever you use it, causing more problems than necessary. And just you try using it as the weakness against Shadow Man. It may do a lot of damage, but the amount of times I tried to hit him without getting hit myself and taking off chunks of damage were immeasurable. What am I doing wrong here? In fact, his whole stage can blow off for all I care. It's full of those stupid enemies that I'm convinced your bullets go straight through. And there's this part here where I swear it's impossible to get by without taking a hit. But in order to get past, make sure you take the hit without being too close to the edge or else... How dare you fall get down the hole? And what about this here in Snake Man stage? Hey, what's all that about? The game also brings back those lovely moments of Mega Man 1 insta-death punishments while pieing lots of enemies onto you. As far as I'm concerned, this game is the best of Mega Man 2 mixed with the worst of Mega Man 1 with a sprinkling of no slippery feet, sliding and the rush abilities. I mean, it's nice to get E-Tanks back and everything, but with so many more insta-death scenarios and enemy ganging, it's hard to appreciate them and it makes you question why they even bothered having them back except for the run to the final parts of the game. And even when you have all the weapons at your disposal, their utility in the stages is very questionable and I didn't find many of them that useful at all. The Searching Snake is alright, it tracks every solid ground surface and is good for the smaller enemies, as are the ninja stars. They're like the metal blades, but much slower and you can fire anyone at a time, so not that great really, actually. The hard knuckle is powerful, but far too slow to be that reliable. The Gemini laser is powerful, yes, but not only has barely any ammo, but if it misses a target, it bounces all over the damn screen and won't let you pause, change weapons, or even fire another laser until it vanishes. It's completely useless. The spark only really stuns enemies and not much else. There are magnets that track enemies up to a point, but then decide to just fly off screen if the target moves even an inch off of the beaten path, and the needles are just a weaker version of the Mega Buster that don't really affect everything, so why the toss would you ever consider using it? And as far as the end game goes, you don't fight Dr. Wily immediately, no, instead you go through four of the stages you just did all over again, except way more difficult and with much harder elements of Mega Man 2 thrown in for the sake of the team knowing that that game was much better. Then you have to fight the Dark Robot Master thing, which is a culmination of mixed powers from older Robot Masters, which, by the way, not only means you have to guess their weaknesses with Mega Man 3 weapon logic, it causing me to die before even figuring out what weapon to use, but also this hybrid monstrosity moves faster, hits harder, and I swear to the Lord can read your mind with where you plan to run to, jump, and attack. Like Mega Man 1, if you didn't have the save feature, I don't know how you're supposed to enjoy this game that much. I mean, check out this bit in the Airman hybrid stage. If you don't have enough rush jet power, or God forbid, get to the end of this trek and lose, that's it. You're done, because the ammo pickups you need to keep flying through this part don't respawn. What's the point? of all of this, and the slowdown, my bleeding Plus hold the slowdown. It screws up your timing with these trapdoor platforms so much. If you don't jump the very second you land on these things, you will fall. So good luck with the inputs not registering on these bits. I understand that for a third game, they probably wanted to make it a bit longer, but this was not the way to do it, if you ask me. Especially considering the Wily stages are probably the easiest in the whole game, and those are the final stages. I mean, they're still challenging, don't get me wrong, but as some kind of twisted apology, you're given four times the amount of E-Tanks you've ever had in any game so far. And compared to that robot master, 
Robotmaster hybrid thing, it seems backwards to stick this part here. Well, I mean, you still have to refight all the original Robot Masters again in case all that feces before wasn't enough for you, but then you go to a pretty decent yet easy fight against the Mad Old Doctor himself, which leads you to finally take down Dr. Wily. Oh, sorry, Dr. Wiley. And then... Okay, do you know what? Fair enough. I actually didn't see that coming. That's kind of cute. And just when everything was going hunky sodding Dory and more like Mega Man 2, the game suddenly remembers Oh yeah, I'm Mega Man 3! And gives you another boss that can only be attacked by upwards attacks, so I hope you have enough ammo for what you need, otherwise game over. And even if you do have the ammo, oops, one hit kill from off screen. Did you also know that this was the peacekeeping robot Dr. Light and Wiley was supposed to make? And what a shock, Dr. Wiley made it evil to take over the world. You finally take down the boss after tons of trial and error and with absolutely no indication that nearly every weapon you have bounces off the last boss leading me to waste tons of ammo and time. After all of this, Wiley isn't apprehended again, but his fortress crumbles and supposedly kills him. And so before Mega Man can think, it turns out the crazy red jumping bastard comes in to save the day because his real name is Proto Man and is actually Mega Man's brother. Okay, whatever. And by the way, this guy is a noob. This may be an unpopular opinion to have, but I think Mega Man 3 personally, is my least favourite of the series so far. I mean, it's not terrible, it's not even that bad of a game, all things considered, but talk about a messy sequel. It's full of trial and error, unplayable slowdown, is extended for no particular reason with pointlessly hard additional bosses, and once again, if it weren't for the save feature, I don't know how one is supposed to enjoy it. We've taken a major step back to Mega Man 1 design with 3, but hopefully, Mega Man 4 will curb my appetite. <laughs> So hey, this game starts with a cutscene, alrighty, great start, and it gives you a little backstory. And wouldn't you know, especially for 8-bit, it's pretty damn beautiful. The animation, the colour choices, it's minimalistic, but almost like a moving comic book. Do you know what else is beautiful though? Sliding up ladders. <laughs> The story this time involves a Russian scientist known as Dr. Cossack, and with Wily supposedly dead, this guy is now the next in line to take over the world. Eight robot masters, fortress stages, same shtick, same dead expression, different paint job. Let's move on. We begin the game at Dustman stage, jump over this pit, and <laughs> but after Dustman bites the dust, <laughs> we then get another badass addition that shows off how much more went into the presentation. Along with the cutscenes, this brief and simple transition when grabbing new weapons is slick as cold mozzarella, and I'm already enjoying this a lot more than three. Slow down is also rare, yes, and that's with this much more detail, which also goes hand in hand with more environmental platforming obstacles to keep things more interesting along with the new Robot Masters. Do you want to go to a skeleton world or an Egyptian temple? That's so kick ass. And the level design also takes a lot more risks with alternate routes for optional goodies, and despite the same controls, abilities and rush gadgets from 3, you also get one of Mega Man's best new abilities, a charge shot to his Mega Buster. This thing saved my sorry face plenty of times, fully charging and keeping a big old shot for minutes bosses, bigger enemies and rows of smaller enemies alike makes this one of the best additions for sure and it's a good alternative to rapid firing if you prefer to wait for a more accurate shot. But the game still has its moments of bollock like in Drillman stage with these constantly respawning rocks above bottomless pits with respawning things right here and many many moments of making a jump before... <laughs> Yeah, that happens, but the game overall feels like a decent balance between 2's design and 3's mechanics for me to say I enjoyed it a ton more. This does mean though that the slide ability isn't really used within the level design all that much, but instead is an extension to Mega Man's movement, so it's used more like a fantastic dodge manoeuvre for many obstacles and attacks, and I can't imagine playing the game without it. This also means that it goes back to 2's set piece design, giving you more segments of platforming and enemy type challenges instead of multiple things going on all at once while being attacked all the time. It's all much more reasonable, and the balance of difficulty is more in favour of either trickier enemies or trickier platforming, never both of them together clashing and causing you hours of salty tears. Just in case things get a little tricky for you though, just pop an E-Tank and you'll be all set. Well, if you don't mind losing your hearing, that is... Oh! The bosses are probably the most reasonably designed in the series so far as well. There's no spamming here and instead nothing but actual readable and reactionary attack patterns. But as far as Robot Master weaknesses go, well, the logic has completely thrown itself out the window. Wanna use a ring boomerang against a dust man? Why not? But the weapons themselves are all once again unique and have special uses in specific situations. The skull shield is like the leaf shield in Mega Man 2, but actually lets you run and jump at the cost of only one hit protection, which is great for falling or flying obstacles, especially over pits. Dustman 
Man's attack, and no, that's not a horror movie, is very powerful and splits into four pieces. Dive Man's missiles track everything at the cost of less ammo, the drill is like a fully charged Mega Buster shot on the fly, the Pharaoh thing can fire diagonally upwards, the ring is great too since it not only slices through enemies but also comes back to you like the Shadow Blade in 3, the Bright attack freezes everything on screen around you for a few seconds, and the Toad attack is like a mini screen nuke. They aren't my favourite weapons so far, but it's a big step up from 3 if you ask me, as are the final stages, which are tough yet once again fair. The end game though isn't against Wily, but the Russian scientist Dr. Cossack instead. Russian scientist Dr. Cossack, I mean come on, seriously? Where's the Spanish scientist Dr. Flamenco? And his tower is very, well... I think he was a big fan of Hard Man too. And this is the same structure as 2, with a few more bosses to beat down before the final boss. And as we climb higher up Cossack Tower, we finally get to the big man himself, who isn't massively difficult, but just as you're about to win, his daughter appears out of nowhere. Appearing out of nowhere seems to be a running theme in Mega Man, along with the crazy red jumping bastard, who both demand that we stop fighting, since Wily, surprise surprise, was the bad guy all along, holding Cossack at hostage. So off we go to stop Wily once again, and his bosses aren't too tricky either, except his final, final phase when he can just teleport on top of you from the dark. <laughs> After which Mega Man wins, doesn't arrest Wily AGAIN, meaning that he escapes, and the game ends. Brilliant. Overall, Mega Man 4 is more of what I was looking for after Mega Man 2, to be honest. It has the mechanics of 3, the design of 2, but it's starting to get a little bit been there, done that for it to massively stand out. It's still a great entry though, and another one I recommend you play. The fact that you don't need to rely on save states again like in 1 and 3 says a lot as well. Before we conclude Mega Man 4 though, can we just take a step back and relax, take some deep breaths, have a moment of reflection and peace as I dedicate a song to one of the greatest bosses in video game history, Toad Man. And I will always love you. Hey everyone, it's me, the guy that's in your dreams every single night. Please be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can see when part two gets released, which will be over the next couple of days, won't be too long. And until then, enjoy the outtakes. <laughs> But thank you so much for watching part one of two of the longest video series I think I've ever done. And before the outtakes come on, I just need to give a special, special thanks to the top tier supporters on my Patreon page in the description below. Omama2, Basil, Gamer Man, I Have a Portal Gun, Robert Alamsha, Oblivion Rising, William Sanborn, Exopaz, Matthew Hubble, Zakari, Mills Kahai, Binary Code, Kirsten B. QB, Cyberpunk Symphony, Thomas Olsen, Nathan Young, Chumba Wumba, Ellen Rupley, Josh at Von Hamburg, James Nardiello, Daniel Leon, DC Dungeon Master, Braden Kenny, Mitch Mitchell Reed, Jane Ives, and A.D. Thornton Smith. Thank you so much, every single one of you. Personally, I think Mega Man 3 is my least of. Uh... Hey, Stan. Are you on the telly? Can we just quickly go over to the telly because we've paused it at a fantastic moment with the um, sign language man. There we go. Can we see um, him? Obviously, yeah. obviously, Steve Backshaw has seen something very interesting. And Steve Backshaw. And I think the sign language man is describing it, whatever it is, it's very small and it's making him angry. <laughs> Do you know what else is beautiful though? Me. <laughs> we'll always love you. That's actually a chord. <laughs> and share in my anguish as we sit down. Oops. And share in my anguish. Angles, I was going to say. Mm. And share in my anguish as we sit. And share in my anguish as we all jump in together. And share in my anguish as we all dive into the cesspit of Mega Man. Thank you. Is that what you were going to say? No. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know why this is the hardest line I've had to say for weeks. Right. Okay. And share in my anguish as we... Really? And share in my anguish as we all dive into the... This is like that advert with the 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 um, buttery... Ba pie thing. Yeah, the pie thing with Lakey. the old people. The baked on a buttery flaky crust or something. Yeah. yeah, this is this is exactly what this is. Yeah.